wrote the Spig Zarathustra. It is remarkable That's the room. That Nietzsche wrote one of his most groundbreaking and influential works. This is uh, the place where he first had the ideas about the book Zarathustra. Zarathustra is a prophet who comes down the mountain and he wants to talk to people in a town about this great event that God is dead, that Christianity, with all its certain universal, absolute moral values, is no longer believed in. And that the question of what it is to be human and how one is to live as a human uh, needs to be answered anew. But nobody listens to Paracousa. And one of the mechanisms to deliver that is this difficult concept the Ubermensch, the Overman, the Superman. Who or what exactly is that? It's quite easy to say what it is not. It's not a biological concept. It's not some kind of superior human race. An Ubermensch is someone who is no longer relying on, on inauthentic external goals to buy the youth from our parent religion. Someone who is able to commit to goals that you set yourself, the ultimate humanity goals, and reach them to a terrifyingly difficult task because the guidelines are mixed. There are no groups. And while you full well know that whatever task you set yourself isn't universal, isn't good for all, it's nevertheless one you commit to. It's one you strive for. Even mention someone who can see this and see that the responsibility and the joy of creating life lies not the transcendent in God, but lies within oneself. Himself into writing Zarathustra. So Zarathustra is Zoroaster, the Persian uh, prophet. So, so he's using that Zoroastrian um, Persian prophet as, as his title there. Alzo means thus in, in English, right? Spoke Zarathustra. Or so ask. Yes. Do you, do you know who wrote the song Zarathustra? The song? Yeah, there's a classical piece of music called Zarathustra. It's like it's oh, all the songs that you don't. You know mean the you mean the horn uh, introduction by uh, Richard Strauss? Oh. So yeah, Richard Strauss <laughs> gives us um, the Spig Zarathustra. It's a tone poem based on. Obviously, this book, right? Um, and so you get uh, um, Zarathustra Strauss. And you're probably thinking yeah. of that very first horn where this guy is putting on his slippers. No, that's not. <laughs> that's the piece you're thinking of. Good note to end the class on, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So I turn it off. No, so we no. don't give you <laughs> <laughs> We'll listen to this and then do the question. <laughs> Gustavo Dudemont? Probably a man. Okay. So, so your question then. Uh, um, so, what's the ultimate point? Else? That's the ultimate point of this philosophy, exactly. I mean, I guess it's still a little bit lost. Like, if, so like, what? Okay, if, if, if the point, I guess that the point is like, I mean, what comes after that? 
Well, as Zarathustra comes down from the mountain, his news, which is a gospel, right? Gospel means the good news. He comes down to the village. That's a, clearly a Christian village. In fact, it, you, you saw the house, you know, in the Alps, where he literally walks down to the village and and informs everyone of the good news that God is dead, and everybody's like, "What? <laughs> this guy's an idiot," you know, you know. Um, but it goes on because God is dead. We have killed him. So he's actually quoting Martin Luther. Who, who points out that as Christians we believe that God died on the cross, he died for our sins, so we've killed him. But what Nietzsche is arguing is that the need for the concept of God that the religions promote is no longer necessary. Because they don't believe it, you know, what, no one believes the stories that they, they talk about God. Instead, you are free from those crypts of the dead God, you know, the church, you're free of that now, and so you get to create value for yourself. And full stop. Pretty much, pretty much. I mean, you know, you could take it lots of different ways from there, as people, you know, lots of different people have, but I think that's pretty much the main thing. But Well, I think the goal is not to be special. I think the goal is to, you know, find meaning in the suffering. He just like he suffered a lot, like a lot, a lot. He did not have eleven years with, yeah, no. But like his like entire goal was to like basically find meaning in the suffering. Kind of like the, the Buddhist idea of like how they find meaning is to life is a certain cycle that repeats and repeats and repeats, and to find meaning you need to achieve nirvana to escape that cycle of suffering. He's saying that the way to escape suffering is to find yourself as an Ubermensch, to be able to set goals for yourself in a way that you feel like your life wasn't suffering, your life was just your life, and you would want to live it again. He, it's it's kind of escaping nihilism in a way. Like everybody believes, or nihilists believe, you know, life is suffering. We shouldn't want to live it at all. It's meaningless. He thinks if we become this Ubermensch, if we find a way to set our goals and achieve them that gives our life meaning, it won't be viewed as suffering. It would be viewed as I lived a good life. Is existentialism just nobody believes in God, so believe in yourself? No, some existentialists are Christians and believe in God. And in fact, uh, someone was interested in, in perhaps interpreting Islam as, as um, compatible with existentialism also. And, and I don't see any problem with that either. Um, I mean, I see like contradictions because if you believe in God, it's, it's like it's you don't it's have it's you rest basically and you don't have Jesus, right? So it's God, it's right? so God is a higher being that uh, space and time don't apply for God. And if, if, if the space and time don't apply for God, God knows like everything, right? Mm -hmm. From beginning of human, end of human, like he knows everything. Mm -hmm. So if he knows everything, you don't have free will. Well, in a in a way, I think you can both have free will. You have free will right now to decide whether you're going to eat the candy bar or not. But God already knows which decision you're making. That makes me is free will is free will then, right? It's the destroyer's choice within the scope of what of what he can see. Maybe yeah, the free will is also like confusing because the free will is li uh, there's a limit for free will, right? Mm -hmm. So I can I can. It wouldn't decide. make sense. It wouldn't make sense for free will to be totally free because if 
you are totally free, your decision to move the glass might not happen. You've decided to move the glass, and if nature is completely cause-free, you would go to move the glass, and the glass might go wherever it wants. Yeah, the definition of free will is like, um, use my free will in a limit. Yes. Yeah, it's, I mean, what you want to say. That's the thing I, I don't like from religion. I'm sorry, but God is the, it's the higher being and knows everything. And then, for example, Ishmael and uh, Abraham, there's a conflict, right? Mm -hmm. So if he knew that it was coming, and why would he do that? That's the thing I find kind of like I'm um, illogical. Yeah. Well, our our description of our experience with God comes from us. This is what I felt. I went up the hill. I thought God wanted me to kill my son. Uh, fortunately, you know, I didn't have to because there was a ram. You know, and and, and we ended up jointly uh, sacrificing the ram. Um, but in the big picture. And, and you could even take the concept of God out of it. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that this is a universe, and the universe is complete from the very beginning to the very end, or, or it, maybe it's constantly going. But in some sense, the universe has contained in it everything that will happen, did happen, is happening. It's all part of the universe. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you don't have free will to make your decisions from one moment to the next. It's not like the universe knowing what you're going to do forces you to make the decision that you make. So I don't see a contradiction in holding the view that you are free, a free agent making decisions within the context of what a human being can do in a social situation and you know with the atmosphere <laughs> and everything you can't decide that I'm, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and breathe fire no you, you can't do that you know but the, the, there's all the, kinds of limits of that sort but you're still free within that context the thing I was talking about with the, with the God if, um, if we have faith right if we have, have like a destiny that, that we are following and then our future is already known. That makes the free will deny, right? So I can't go, I can't like do whatever that is not, not as written in my destiny, that my fate. And like, for example, God know tomorrow I will go to some place and I go there and then because that's, that's, that's known for God, but it's decided still, by me, but yeah. it's not yeah. free will for me because it's already known, and then it's like I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think. Well, for me, the meaning of free will is a contextual linguistic expression, mm -hmm. and so, in the sense that you know you're driving down the road, you decided you're late, so you're going to go 75 miles an hour, and the policeman pulls you over and says, it's not my fault, I had to because I didn't want to be late. No, the policeman's going to give you a ticket. Because yeah. as far as the policeman's concerned, you were the free agent driving the car that was speeding. So it was your choice, and next time don't make that choice. <laughs> so um, we use the idea of free will that way. Um, if you're thinking as a scientist that every cause has an effect and every effect has a cause or set, set of causes. So nothing happens without that causal connection, set of connections. So you're driving down the highway, you know, going 75, you think that's your choice, but it's actually the pressures that are on you, the ability to drive that fast, the lack of other traffic, etc. So all these causes 
are also part of why you were driving 75 miles an hour. Yeah, so from, uh, from that point of view, oh, you don't have free agency, you're, you're a, an auto automaton. You know, like like they, you know, the the ones that they like to think about today are zombies. You know, they're just, you know, <laughs> everybody's just doing, you know, whatever. Uh, no free agency. You know, there's no no free person inside that zombie. It's just a, an automaton uh, moving moving around. Or or another interesting aspect when we're talking about um, artificial intelligence is that robot. Is it thinking? Does that have